One of the most common applications implemented with K2 is an application that manages the submission, approval, and processing of expense claims. Now this process can take many names such as expense reporting, travel claims, employee expense reimbursement, and so on. By automating your organization's expense claim submission and approval process, you can better control and manage expenses in your organization while reducing the processing time for reimbursing employees for their personal expenses. Implementing a more structured and audited application around the approval and processing of expense claims can also help to reduce risk and enforce your organization's reimbursement policies. The purpose of this tutorial is to guide you through creating a sample expense claim approval application. We recommend using this tutorial to build out the basic sample application, and once you've completed it, you can move on to extend it with additional forms, more system integration, and additional approval steps based on the needs in your organization. Now, the sample application in this tutorial is designed with the basics in mind, designating a starting point for you to expand on to implement your own requirements. The nice thing about this is at the end of the tutorial you will have a fully functional application ready for use in your organization. Plan to spend roughly three to four hours to work through this tutorial, but when you're done with it you will walk away with more knowledge on how to integrate with external data systems like web services and SQL databases, how to create a data storage area using Smartbox and Smart Objects. you'll also learn how to build more advanced forms using K2 Smart Forms, how to manually integrate a K2 smart form with a workflow, and to round it out, you'll walk through using reporting controls to build a custom report in a smart form. Let's begin the demonstration of our expense claim approval application by submitting two new expense claims to the system. To set the context, one of these will be approved right away, while the other will be returned for rework. This should give you a pretty good understanding of how the workflow works. From the landing page of my site, I'll browse to the expense claim list in SharePoint, and then I'll go ahead and create a new item in the list, which, if you notice here, uses the customized new expense claim smart form that was designed to handle the header or master information for this claim, as well as expense items down here at the bottom of the page, which happen to be the details. I'll go ahead and call this first item Demo Expense 1. I'm going to add Bob in as the requester for this expense claim. This is going to demonstrate the ability to add on behalf of another employee. And after doing that, I'm going to select Anthony as the approver. Just to explain another interesting point right here, we assigned this pick list to only pull from a SharePoint group that contains a defined list of approvers for this workflow task. So basically, in the Approvers lookup, only the individuals in this group will be available when selecting an approver. Now, down here under Expense Claim Items, I'll add the first one in as Airfare here at the bottom of the page. To demonstrate the currency code functionality that we built into the cash amounts, I'll first select a date from a few days ago, or last week basically, and enter in an amount of 300 for the cash total. Let's go ahead and select the currency type next. For this trip, let's say we went to Great Britain and had to use British pounds. With that selected, you'll notice that the US dollar conversion happens automatically and it happens to be tied to the conversion rates on the date that I selected. Also, if there are any changes to the date, currency code, or amount, the US dollar amount will change upon that event. So to finish this up, I'm gonna enter in a quick description of this line item a company to pay in the payee box, and then I'll attach a fictional receipt using the image control dialog here on the line item. Great, now that that's done, I'm going to actually add in one more expense item to this list for my car rental. As I walk through adding an entity to pay, selecting the date, and filling in all the data for it, you'll see that the amounts are calculated and a total sum is aggregated at the bottom of the list after adding this list item in. And for the sake of this demo, I'm going to just pick currency code of Euro for the second item, and I'll enter in 300 again. This is going to be so you could see that the currency amount is actually calculated differently even though I'm selecting the same date. And that's all I'll put in for this one. So now I'm ready to submit the form and start the workflow for this claim. 
we should see a confirmation message with the ID of the expense claim pop up. And once we click OK, the page should be redirected back to the expense claim list in SharePoint. I'm not quite done just yet, so I'm going to actually pause the video for the sake of time to enter in a second expense claim so that we can review multiple paths of the workflow. We will eventually use this expense claim to ask the approver to return it with a query once the workflow begins. Okay, with that claim added, we can see that both workflows have started and you should also see that the status columns of both expense claims in the SharePoint list were changed to submitted. This is because one of the first steps that fires in the workflow once it begins is to update the status of each claim. Before we move these two tasks on to the next workflow step, Let's quickly review the dashboard report, which will show us the at-a-glance information about the current state of these workflow instances. We can get to this report from the Quick Launch menu here on the left side of the page. At this point in time, our approvers haven't done anything yet with these tasks, so we should see instances of the workflow submitted in the bar charts and also two items in the Expense Claims Awaiting Approval view down here at the bottom. Since I assigned both of these expenses to Anthony for approval, I'll go ahead and bring up an instance of his browser where we should see two tasks assigned to him in the K2 work list on the landing page of the site. To actually work through these tasks though, I'm going to move over to Anthony's email client where we can see that he has received two messages for expense claim approval assignments as well. Let's open the message for the first demo expense approval task assignment. Notice here in this message, there's a link that takes us over to the approval form for this task. I'll go ahead and click that link, which is going to bring up the expense claim approval form where we can review the information for this expense. As you can see here, the approver has everything needed to review all the data for the expense claim here in a master detail style view. We can see all the cost amounts for each expense item as well as open the attached receipt if necessary. For this particular task, I'm going to approve it by selecting that option from the decision list. We'll go ahead and add a little comment in the comments box, and then submit the form back to K2 where it will go on to be processed by finance. Moving back over to the landing page of the SharePoint site, we can open the second approval task from the K2 work list. Remember, we can also do this from the email client if we need to. For this task, I'm going to ask the originator to provide more information about the flight in the description for the airfare line item because in this case it was kind of vague. And once I do that, I'll select Query as my decision and submit the form back to K2. Now let's move over to the dashboard page where we should see that there is now one expense claim awaiting processing but actually the second expense claim has been removed from the dashboard because its status was set to query. Therefore, it is not awaiting approval, nor is it awaiting processing. Now, if we quickly go back over and open the expense claim SharePoint list, we should see the two expense claims that we put in. The first claim status should be set to approved, and the second one should be set to query. So with that, it looks pretty good up to here. Let's demonstrate the rework loop. Now I want to edit the expense claim that was returned with a query and will resubmit it for approval. To do this, I will actually go back over to my email client. We should see two email notifications from K2 here. The first telling us that our expense claim was approved and sent for processing, and the second one telling us that the expense claim was returned with a query along with the comments entered by the approver within the body of the message. Okay, with concern for the approver's comment about the airfare line item, I'll click the link to open the Query Tasks Expense Claim form. I'll go ahead and add a better description for the airfare line item to make the approver happy. And then finally, click the Resubmit Claim button to send the claim back for approval again. We've already approved the first demo expense claim, so we can move on and look at that one as it is currently assigned to the finance processing team members for processing. This task is visible to all of them at this point in time because nobody has actually opened the task to review it yet. I'll flip over to the browser of Mike, who is a member of the finance processing group in SharePoint, 
And from there, I'll open the Finance Processing task using the K2 Task List app part on his web page. As you can see, this opens up a form customized for the Finance Processing task. To complete this expense claim, let's just set it to Finance Processed and submit it back to K2. With that complete, let's quickly jump over and look at the originator's email inbox. Here we can see the email notification that came back stating that the expense claim has been processed. Now before we go and look at the dashboard report, I'd like to show you one more thing on the form for the still running task that is now sitting back in the approvers task list. We did configure this form to make comments mandatory if a reject decision is made. And to prove this, I'm going to reject this task without entering a comment first. Notice, upon clicking the Submit button, we get a message box that won't let us submit the form until the Comments box is filled in with something. So, okay, I'll enter a brief comment as to why the task is being rejected. Then I'll submit it. And to prove that we have an email notification sent back to the originator if this action is taken, let's flip over to my email app instance. There's the rejected expense claim notification as expected. The last thing we did in this phase of the workflow design was to update the status column back in the expense claim SharePoint list for each claim once the workflow finishes. And going back to that list, you can see that one was marked processed with the process date filled in, and the other one is updated as rejected. Before we finish this demonstration, the last thing we're going to look at is the report setup for it. As we saw before, the dashboard report comes in the form of a dashboard page linked off the quick launch menu of the SharePoint site. It is tied specifically to this application for purposes of the demo, so let's open it up to verify that there are no expense claims listed in the awaiting approval nor the awaiting processing views. Looking down at those two lists on the bottom of the page shows nothing currently pending for either of those two statuses. Now that we've completed those two workflow instances, take notice of the changes in the bar charts for the submitted claims and the average duration. At the moment, these charts will not contain very useful information, but over time, these reports will start filling up with more interesting metrics. Let's check out what's going on with the default K2 application reports that were configured to be enabled when we first created the application. You can get to this from the ribbon menu at the top of the page for the expense claim list under the K2 menu group. On this report, the bar chart on the left accounts for the two workflow instances we just ran. When you click on a bar in the report, the instances it counts will be listed on the right side with overall information about the process. Now, if you select an instance from this list, you will also get activity instance information at the bottom of the page, and you can select one of the user task activities to see who worked that task on the right side down here. If you're interested in a graphical representation of the flow a process takes, click on the View Flow Report link for each workflow instance. This page will allow you to verify that the workflow executed along the appropriate path based on the decisions made in the workflow. Once you're in the ViewFlow graphical report, you can open up each step of the workflow by double-clicking on the step itself. I'll demonstrate that here by opening the Approve Expense Claim step for this one. And here you can view information about this step, including seeing who the participants were to determine who approved this claim. With that, we're at the end of our demonstration of the Expense Claim Approval application. Thank you for watching this demonstration. The next step, if you'd like to join me, will be to head over to the series of design and build videos for this application, where you'll get the chance to actually build this application out in your own environment.